if you haven't seen my video, my first video for maximum and minimum, where I explained the first derivative test, watch that first and come back here. What we are going to explain is the second derivative test. The idea of the second derivative test is very simple. Let's suppose that f is twice differentiable at a point x sub 0, meaning that it has first and second derivatives. And let's say that in, at that point, the first derivative is 0. Now, for example, at this point, the first derivative may be uh, 10. And at this point, the first derivative is going to be smaller because the slope is getting smaller and smaller is approaching zero. So let's say that the first derivative here has a value of five. And at this point, the first derivative probably has a value negative four and maybe here it has a value negative nine, things like that. So we see that f prime is decreasing. And if f prime is decreasing, the second derivative at x sub 0 is less than 0, because the second derivative is the rate of change of the first derivative. I mean, if the first derivative is decreasing, the second derivative is less than 0. And we see that in this case, f has a local maximum. Similarly, let's say that the first derivative here at x sub 0 is 0. At this point, probably the first derivative is negative 8. And maybe here the first derivative is negative 6. Here is 0. Probably here the first derivative is 3. And maybe here the first derivative is 7. So we see that f prime is increasing this time. And if f prime is increasing, the second derivative, which is the rate of change of the first derivative, at x sub 0 is greater than 0. And we see that the function has a local minimum. f has a local minimum at x of 0. The tricky part is that if the second derivative at x of 0 is 0, then the test is inconclusive. And then we would have to go back to the first derivative test to find out if there is a maximum, a minimum, or nothing. So if this second derivative test may fail, may be inconclusive, but the first derivative test isn't, why would we want to use the second derivative test? And the reason is that whenever we can, when this doesn't happen, it is easier. And in which cases it is easier? It is easier to use than the first derivative test, mainly with polynomials, because the more derivatives you find, the easier it gets. The first derivative um, is simpler than the function. The second derivative is simpler than the first derivative. That happens with polynomials. So if you are given a um, polynomial and asked to find relative maximum and minimum, it is very tempting to use the second derivative test because we don't have to um, locate all the critical numbers, x1, x2, x3, whatever they are, and figure out if the first derivative is positive here, negative here. We don't have to do this analysis. We have to apply the second derivative test to each critical point where the derivative is zero. If we have a critical point where the first derivative is not zero but undefined, we cannot use the second derivative test for that critical point.
Now let's do an example. Let's say that we want to find the relative extrema, the relative maximum and minimum point of f of x equals 6 x to the fifth minus 10 x cubed. First thing we should do is figure out what the domain is, always. And this is a polynomial, so the domain is all real numbers. Now, next, we need to find the critical point. And for that, the first thing that we need to do is to find the first derivative of the function. And it's going to be 30x to the fourth minus minus 30x squared. We can factor 30x squared that multiplies x squared minus 1. And then we can also factor x squared minus 1 as 30x squared x plus 1 x minus 1. Okay, now we have to make the first derivative equal to 0, or the first derivative undefined to find the critical point. Undefined, we're not going to find any because this is also a polynomial and whatever value of x we plug in, we're always going to get a valid answer. So no critical points over here. Too many times um, you, when you do these problems about maximum and minimums, this is what happens. That you don't find any values that make the first derivative undefined, so people stop doing it. Don't stop doing it. Always check when the derivative is zero, when the first derivative is undefined. The first derivative zero means that 30x squared times x plus 1 times x minus 1 must be equal to zero. The only way that that could happen is if x squared is equal to zero, or x plus 1 is equal to 0, or x minus 1 is equal to 0. And that is going to give us x equals 0, x equals negative 1, and x equals 1. And you should always check, once you found the values that make the first derivative 0, check if they are in the domain. <clears throat> Obviously, in this case, they are in the domain because the domain contains all real numbers. So this is a critical point, this is a critical point, and this is a critical point. By the way, the values of x that make <clears throat> the first derivative zero are called stationary points. Stationary points. So whatever the first derivative is zero, we can use the... Um, second derivative test, okay? Assuming that the function has first and second derivatives. So what we should do now is find the second derivative. And um, this is <clears throat> the first derivative. So what is the second derivative? 4 times 30 is 120 x cubed minus 60 x and now we have to evaluate the second derivative at each one of those stationary points. So the second derivative evaluated at negative 1 would be 120 times negative 1 cubed minus 60 times negative 1. And that is going to give you negative 60 because this is going to be negative 120 plus 60 is going to be less than 0. And if it is less than 0 at that critical point, then f has a local or relative, let me call it relative, has a relative um, maximum at x equals negative 1. What happens at 0? The second derivative evaluated at 0 is going to give me 0 here and 0 here. 0, therefore, 
the second derivative test derivative test is inconclusive inconclusive at x equals 0 so we're going to have to go back to the first derivative test and check that point check that critical point what happens with the, the second derivative at 1 the second derivative at 1 is going to um, give me 120 times 1 cube minus 60 times 1 and that is going to be 60 which is greater than 0 therefore f has a relative minimum at x equals 1 okay and then we have to take care of this point because at that point the second derivative test fails meaning at that point there may be a maximum there may be a minimum or they may there may be nothing okay so let's check let's go back to the first derivative test which basically we have to um, see what happens around zero here we have negative one zero and one so if I take a point here let's say that I take a point there um, let's say negative one half and I'm going to evaluate the first derivative at negative one half and the first derivative of negative one half is going to be 30 remember the first derivative is this this expression here okay so the first derivative is going to be 30 times negative one half to the fourth minus 30 times negative one half square right so that's what we're going to do we're going to do 30 times negative one half to the fourth minus 30 times negative one half square and if you do that with the calculator you will see that it gives you negative 5.625 we don't care what number it is we just care that it is less than zero so the first derivative here is negative and if I choose here for example one half and I calculate the first derivative at one half it's going to be exactly the same number because I'm going to have one half to the fourth and one half squared so it's going it's going to be exactly the same number minus 5.625 which is less than zero so the first derivative here is negative and if it is negative here and negative here no relative extrema or extremum no relative extremum at x equals zero